State attempting to keep the championship of the ACC. And Jim Valvano's cardiac kids won the West in dramatic fashion. Trying to pull another one out. Derek Wittenberg. This is outside. Thurl Bailey rebound. Bailey again. Foul call. NC State lead. Seven seconds on the clock. Tim Mullen. This is the shot. The rebound. Wilson inside. Loose ball. It's over. NC State win. The keys to this game are varied and many. And let's go to the two men who are going to call the action. Gary Bender and Billy Packer. Gary. Thank you, Brett. North Carolina State. Jim Valvano said, I believe in dreams. He feels they're a team of destiny. They've won nine in a row. The last NCAA championship year, 1974. Two principal players in this game, Terry Quittenberg and Thurl Bailey. Terry Quittenberg had a brilliant game the first time out, 20 points. Now Derek on the offensive end of the court, Gary, probably has a bigger arsenal that he can beat you with than anybody in college ball. He's got the 30-foot jumper as well as the power game inside. And for a man his size, he can go inside. Speaking of size, Thurl Bailey at 6'11". He's got to combat that front line of Houston. Well, Thurl can do it on the defensive end and on the boards. And one big advantage he has playing against a team like Houston, he can go outside and make the perimeter shot. We heard the coaches talk about tempo. Obviously, North Carolina State cannot get in a run and dunk contest. Well, they really can, and, and Jim Valvano said his fraternity is Kai slow the ball on. <laughs> I don't know if that'll be the case tonight. I don't think we'll see an all-out all out delay game, Gary, but I do think that they will play a slow tempo ball game. Houston's won 26 in a row. They're number one. They have never won an NCAA championship. Let's look first at Clyde the Glide Drexler. 21 points and seven rebounds in the semifinal. Well, Gary, we made the comment in the great game that was played up in Syracuse this year that this is probably college basketball's finest all-around athlete. And I think he's proved that in the NCAA playoff. And then there's seven-foot Akeem Abdul Elijahwan. He had eight blocks in the semifinal game. And what's so incredible about him is his timing has improved, as you see right there. If you get by young Drexler and Mishaw, there is Elijahwan waiting there, and he has great shot-blocking ability. And so now the stage being set. Let's go back to Brent Musburger. All right, Gary and Billy. And again, Jim Valvano on the right. He has a team in the final four for the first time. Guy Lewis of Houston on the left. This is his fourth trip. He has never won the championship. We are ready for basketball's greatest spectacle. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. For North Carolina State at forward, a 6'11 senior from St. Pleasant, Maryland, number 41, Thurl Bailey. For Houston at forward, a 6'7 junior from Houston, Texas, number 22, Clyde Drexler. For North Carolina State at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Brooklyn, New York, number 43, Lorenzo Charles. For Houston at forward, a 6'9 senior from Houston, Texas, number 40, Larry Mishaw. For North Carolina State at center, a 6'11 sophomore from Bennettsville, South Carolina, number 45, Roselle McQueen. For Houston at center, a 7-foot sophomore from Lagos, Nigeria, number 34, Akeem Abdul Olajuwon. A 6'1 senior from Glenarden, Maryland, number 25, Derek Wittenberg. For Houston at guard, a 6'2 freshman from Lamarck, Texas, number 20, Alvin Franklin. For North Carolina State at guard, a 6'0 senior from Washington, D.C., number 35, Sidney Lowe. Houston at guard, a 6'6 junior from Houston, Texas, number 42, Michael Young. And introducing the head coaches for North Carolina State in his 12th season, Jim Valvano. For Houston in his 27th season, Guy Lewis. This 31 and 2 record, North Carolina State 25 and 10, the officials chosen for tonight's championship game. Hank Nichols of the ACC and Big East, Paul Hausman of the ACC, and Joe Forte of the ACC Metro. 
North Carolina State with three seniors in the starting lineup. On the other hand, Houston has only one starting senior, that being Larry Mishaw, 6-9. Here's how they got here. North Carolina State, six of seven games, had to come from behind to win. Houston, on the other hand, very impressive wins. They had a slowdown game with Maryland. We're ready to go. Elijah Wan controls a tip, but coming up with it is Wittenberg for North Carolina State. Smart rotation by Derek Wittenberg, but Phil Valley stayed up there pretty good with Elijah Wan. Team who had 22 rebounds in that win over Louisville has his first to the night. Here's Drexler, off to Larry Michon, who fouled out in the first game. Rebound, Thurl Bailey. Shot altered by Kozel McQueen, and we can see right off the bat, Gary, we're not going to have a total delay game. That shot put up there early by Thurl Bailey eliminates that idea. Thurl Bailey, rebound, Kozel McQueen, he had 13, a seasonal high in the win over Georgia. Outside is Low Bailey. Now that's going to shock a lot of people. NC State going right at him. Maybe personifying the type of attitude that a Jim Valvano would have. He's the kind of guy that likes to come at you. Alvin Franklin, who's played so well in tournament play. He's had only 22 turnovers since becoming the starter on this team. Barry Michon, he walked with the ball. Larry Mishaw, who fouled out with 13.28 to go in the game against Louisville. Everybody thought it was over when he left, but Benny Anders came in, and they pumped the lead and went on to win it. Straight man-to-man, -man, and you've got Drexler on Lorenzo Charles. So Young and Franklin playing Wittenberg. That's going to be a key matchup. I thought they might go Drexler on Wittenberg. Maybe they're going to save him a while. Wittenberg uses the pick. Rebound is Lorenzo Charles, and they have a 4 to nothing lead. Great job out there by Elijah Wan coming out off the pick on the switch, but it didn't stop NC State. Now let's look at the state defense. Very unusual looking defense. Michael Young, Akeem tries to follow, Bailey comes down with it. And we have a foul going on Misha, and everything is going right for Look Jim Valvano. Look at Jimmy Valvano, he's running up to the half court. He's really got his guys fired up to play this game. Now, NC State's playing a little Chinese defense right here. Maybe a dime, a triangle in two, or a diamond in one. We've got to watch it the next time down the floor with Wittenberg on Young. Jim Valvano said if we'd get the opening tip, we might not shoot till Tuesday, but he certainly put that to rest. Here is Bailey, six to nothing, the Wolfpack. This has to shake up Houston a little bit because everybody around town talked about a delay game, but that's not the case. Alvin Franklin to reach in by Sidney Lowe. And smart it's going to be play. picked up by Wittenberg. What a smart play. Advanced it to the front court. Tough shot. Wittenberg rebounds it. He took it away from Michael Young. Out to Bailey. And the team has another rebound. You'd have to think maybe State with three men down the other end of the floor would have been wise to pull that one back out. Now watch this defense. You've got Wittenberg playing man-to-man -man on Young. The other four guys are playing zone. Akeem moving inside, and a foul is going to go on low, reaching in as he crossed up the middle. It's a very interesting idea by Jim Valvano. Four fellas playing zone, one playing man-to-man. -man. And the guy they're playing man-to-man -man on is Young, uh, their leading scorer. But on the other hand, the guy that usually plays better in the second half than the first. This is the man that was the most valuable player in the Midwest region. What a first game he had. 21 points, 22 rebounds, and eight block shots. He gets Houston on the board. He shot stepped in beautifully there. Up, that may be offensive interference. I believe it is. Yes, it is. Misha up above the cylinder, so they'll take it out on the side. And he showed some power, though, stepping in off that foul shot. Very powerful young man. The Damatha High School twins, Wittenberg and Lowe, bring it up. Kozell McQueen, he's got to have a big game tonight for North Carolina State. Look at this move. Rebound, and it's taken out by Clyde Drexler. Great help by Drexler. Clyde Drexler, you can see why they call him the glide. He just glided through the air that time. McQueen made a fine move, but Drexler's tremendous defensive switching ability came over to Aldrich. And then he showed what he can do on that hanging jump shot. We have played three minutes in this game. NC State leads it six to three. Trucks are also showing his versatility on defense. He's guarding a power man today. Sometimes he takes a guard. Sidney Lowe, Young, has about five inches on him. State's got to get Wittenberg in a shooting position. Franklin playing way out on him now. Probably going to need some solid screens. Lorenzo Charles, Drexler reaches in, and he got a piece of him. 
Drexler committing the foul. Drexler, third in the nation this year in steals, and it's just those kind of plays he usually pulls off. Well, one of the things he'll find out early, and he'll make the adjustment, is Lorenzo Charles has a tremendous upper body and a lot of strength in those hands. So where he might normally get the, the steal on just a flick of the wrist, he can't take it away from Charles that way. Second team foul now against Houston. Wait a minute, we have a stoppage of play. The officials checking with the scoring table. Guy Lewis with 61 years of age. Wanted to be sure, I guess, who the foul was on. It right. was Rexler. You know, we had a little difficulty with him in the Midwest regionally. He had six fouls before he fouled out. So they're going to ascertain for sure where it, who it was, and it was Clyde. Lorenzo Charles sitting down there on Drexler, trying to go inside. Wittenberg so far has been handled by Franklin one-on-one. -on -one. Lorenzo Charles rejected. That's 36 blocks in the last five games for this Houston team. Alvin Franklin, air ball, Wittenberg. Drexler's chasing him. Nice pass to Lowe. He overshot it, and it came with another rebound. I think State ought to be a little wiser on the fast break. You can't get in the running game with Houston like this. And they are, and Mishaw converts at the other end. Now, State's got to be a little bit more protective. Even when you have the fast break, you cannot beat Houston in a 90-foot game. Well, after a 6-0 lead, it's now a 6-5 game. Wittenberg's been stymied a little bit by Franklin playing out on him. Let's see if State tries to get the ball to Wittenberg and get some solid screens for him. North Carolina State now has missed their last five shots. Franklin, mighty tough for a freshman. He's got powerful legs. He can stay right with Wittenberg. Wittenberg, baseline to Charles. Rebound, Drexler. Intimidated by Elijah Wan. Michael Young. He starts slowly. He's done that every game. He's missed two here in this game. Now he gets the Cougars the lead. Gary, it's a tough thing for a coach to do to take away the fast break for his team. And Jim Belvano wants his club to be very positive in their actions, but he's got to slow it down a little bit unless they have an uncontested layup. Earl Bailey, the all-ACC pick. Brings it out to Wittenberg. He's been averaging 21 and a half points in NCAA journey play. Franklin on him. Charles keeps it in. Lorenzo Charles saved it somehow. Out to Baylor. Lowe's got a tough job with a man like Young on him. He's got so much size. That's the range of Wittenberg. Elijah Wan with yet another rebound. And he's going to have a handful again. He has four already. Misha. No, that may be offensive interference. It is. They will not allow the basket. If Elijah Wan had left that ball alone on there, I believe it would have gone in. But Guy Lewis will never take away his aggressive action. You'll see it right here. Mishaw puts it up. The ball is in the cylinder. And here comes Drexler and Elijah Wan, and they get a piece of it while it's up above the cylinder. As you can see, Houston loves to play above the rim. Welcome back to the pit in Albuquerque. A national championship game. Houston, after trailing 6 to nothing, has taken a 7-6 to six lead. Jim Valvano with a 10-year contract in his hip pocket. And Guy Lewis, his 27th year. As the coach of the Houston Cougars trying to win his first NCAA championship. First substitution in here. Battle is taking Lorenzo Charles' place. You notice that they won't go out and play Kozel McQueen 18, 19 feet from the basket. Elijah Wan stays in right under the basket. North Carolina State now has gone over four minutes without scoring after opening up with that 6 to nothing lead. They're shooting only 20%. Thurl Bailey. Great foul, Mishaw. Fine defense by Mishaw. They've scouted Bailey well. Rexley. Rebound, Battle, who's just checked in. Alvin Battle, a junior, at 6-7 with a rebound. Battle coming in for Lorenzo Charles. His first change for Balbano, and here he shoots one. Putting the ball up much too fast, Gary. They've got to be much more patient than that. Drexler into Mishaw. Mishaw, the big muscle man inside. Akeem. Bailey tries to fall over the back of Mishaw. It's out of bounds, and it's going to go to North Carolina State. NC State got great play out of Kozel McQueen to beat Georgia, and he's playing a fine game already tonight. Billy, it's amazing to me how they started out 6 to nothing, and now North Carolina State has missed 10 in a row. Well, I think they've lost an awful lot of their composure. Maybe those baskets came a little bit too easily for them, Gary. There you see the shooting percentage. Here's a clear out for Wittenberg. But look at Franklin staying right with him. 
Here's Battle. He's challenging him. Bring out another foul on Drexler. That would be his second. Great call by the official saying the ball was on the way up. Gave a proper signal right off the bat. Now Drexler got into foul difficulty in the Midwest Regional. Now watch. Battle's kind of spread out. You see how far apart his feet were when he made that jump shot? He didn't have good balance at all. But he got fouled on the way up. But a good call by the official in uh, disallowing any goaltending. Battle is out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. He was the California Junior College Player of the Year last year at Mercer College. And he hits a free throw. He's come in here playing with some confidence. Rocky Mountain has put out a lot of fellas. Bill Ford won. Bill Ford is one, and Buck Williams another from that small town in eastern North Carolina. They're all tied up, and now the Wolfpack leads by one. 13 3 to go. First half. Now let's check out this defense again. Wittenberg on Young. The four other state players are playing a diamond zone. Michael Young, rebound inside to Kozell McQueen. Boy, has he played so well in this tournament. And that's what they need is a play from McQueen, Battle, and Charles. That's not a shot. Oh, I'll bet Jim Valvano said no, no, and then saw it go in. I think state shot selection's been very poor, and uh, so far of all of them, that might have been one least expected to go in. Well, when you're playing well, put them up. 10-7, North Carolina State. Franklin, there's Lowe reaching in on him. Reichman having a tough time. And there's a steal by Drexler, but it's off of Drexler. And Drexler got away with a foul there because he really ran Sidney Lowe from behind. But you can't afford to throw that long pass against Houston. Drexler just covers too much ground. Drexler, for his career, believe it or not, has over 200 steals. And Ready to go now. What? Yeah, no, he's just a junior. Everybody thinks it. he's a senior. 10-7. The Wolfpack still with that lead. I think the Wolfpack have got to figure out a way to get Derek Wittenberg the ball in offensive shooting range. And Jim Valvano really upset with Battle. He wants him to get to their offense. The Battle travels with it. And so we're going to have a timeout with 12-12 to go. Guy Lewis, last year, he lost to the semifinal. This year, he's to the championship game. Here's a play that NC State will have a hard time making tonight in the fact that Drexler covers so much ground. Now, he came over. I said he committed the foul right there on low, and we didn't think it was a foul at the time, but we're checking with the scores table. If it was a foul, that'll That's be Drexler's third. third foul. State comes out in the half-court trap. Danny Anders, who just checked in, puts one up. Rebound McQueen, but he threw it away. And Jim Valvano is livid. He, he has to get his players to realize they're not going to get that semi-fast break. We have a confirmation that was the third foul on Drexler. So that play that we thought was a foul, in fact, was. Here's Anders. Tried to put it away, and Battle has committed the foul. Now, Gary, I want to point something out here. You remember, and you made mention of it, Drexler had six fouls in one game here in the regionals, that one being Memphis State. Now, the other thing was in the game on Saturday, Guy Lewis and his assistants did not realize that Mishaw had four fouls on him when he did in the game. I don't think that bench realizes Drexler has three fouls on him right now. We had the benefit of a replay to show us. Here's Anders, who was sensational in that semifinal game. He had 13 points coming in when Mishaw fouled out from Bernice, Louisiana. He is a very exciting basketball player. He can cut the lead to one. Oh, good job by a team coming down the lane, didn't get the tap. Can you imagine nobody blocking him out? So again, we'll confirm. Clyde Drexler with three fouls in the game. Here's Battle, Akeem with the block. Benny Anders. Good hustle by Bailey. That was a reach in by McQueen, and then he comes up with a foul. He fouls Elijah Wan, that's his first. Elijah Wan down at the other end of the floor had actually been taken off his feet. You'll see it right here. Charles gets it, makes a great pump fake here, gets Elijah Wan in the air, but Elijah Wan blocks it on the way down and then heads it the other end of the floor. Look at the great speed by the big man right here. He hustles down the floor as well as any big man that's ever played the game. As an end result, he ends up with the free throw line with a couple of shots by that hustling effort that you pointed out. He has one point, but six rebounds already, Billy, and two blocks. Well, last year in the final game, we saw Patrick Ewing, who I think moves from offense to defense and vice versa as well as anybody that ever played. And evidently, Elijah Wan has watched Patrick play because he's doing the same thing. Here we have a half-court zone trap now by Houston. A one-point lead for North Carolina State. McQueen, bad pass, Young, but saved somehow by Wittenberg. Nice effort. 
Here's Thurl Bailey. That's his shot down there, but Thurl hadn't been able to hit it. Seven rebounds now for the seven-footer from Nigeria. Reed Geddes has checked into the ballgame. So Geddes and Anders have come off of a very deep Houston bench. But Drexler's still out there. They should have tried to draw the charge there. They could have got four on him. Sidney Lowe spots Wittenberg. Wittenberg, the long-range bomber. And maybe the first sign of fatigue. Kozel McQueen and Lorenzo Charles did not head down the court that time. You've got McQueen bending over. Now I think the altitude will start showing its effect. We're playing at 5,200 feet. The altitude very evident in the semifinal round. Here is Anders. Rebound, Elijah Wan. Not a good shot. Young saves it into Anders. They just keep hammering away at you. And we have a foul. That was worth the block for NC State because Elijah Wan had the dunk right there. Now, here are five attempts at the basket. Elijah Wan puts it up. Young does a great job saving it back in. Anders goes up, hits it over the board. Here comes Elijah Wan back in, goes up and gets fouled. And was that on Kozel McQueen? It would be his second personal. It is Terry Gannon, 24, has come in. An excellent outside shooter. And Gary, in the half-court trap that Houston showed the last time down, they have such a big team on the floor that Gannon may have a hard time passing the ball over that trap. Houston, not a good free-throw shooting team, but they get a couple to go down there, and they now trail by one, 12-11. And Houston stays in the trap. Now watch Drexler's in the middle. He covers so much ground. It's very difficult to throw over the top of this trap. Gary Gannon from Joliet, Illinois, brings it out of three-guard offense. That's a charge on Wittenberg. Tremendous athletic ability by Anders as he got over in front of him. Gary Wittenberg with his first personal foul. Five team fouls now against North Carolina State. NC State should be very aware of Drexler. When he drives to the basket, they should try to draw a foul on him. Wittenberg now playing young. Here's Reed Geddes, second in the Southwest Conference this year in assist, averaging only 22 minutes a game. Gary, they've put Gannon over on Young. They've got Wittenberg playing his own, so stayed very small from a rebounding standpoint. Drexler to Anders. He walked with the ball. That basket will not count. He traveled at six turnovers now against Houston. Just a little too animated in his play right now. That's been his problem, Billy, is being under control. He has such athletic ability. Here comes the trap again. You've got Geddes out there at about six foot four. Very difficult to throw over. Saved by Sidney Lowe. Lowe, the all-time assist man at NC State. Gannon to Bailey. Trying to spread it out a little bit now. Lowe by a team. And then he made a collision with Lowe and committed the foul. After the shot. Gary, with the score, 12 to 11. And, and Houston in that half-court trap. You'll see it right here. How far away Elijah Wan was when he started and still got a piece of that ball. But there, NC State has got to throw the ball around and make Houston run a little bit. That's what they were doing on that last sequence. Thurl Bailey over the top. And now North Carolina State by three. Bailey 6'11. Shot over Elijah Wan that time. Kind of surprised him. He shot without the fake. Bailey with six points. 9-16 to go. First half of play. Get us into Elijah Wan. Solid move across the lane. He didn't use much of a fake there either, but just has a great move, pivoting either right or left. That's his first field goal of the night. Thurl Bailey again. That's his shot, as you mentioned, Billy. That's where he likes to shoot from, right down in the corner, and that'll be open against that 1-3-1 trap. That takes it back to a three-point lead for Jim Valvano, the ACC Tournament Champions. <laughs> kind of surprised they don't go on Gannon. Get a good outside shooter. Cuts it to one. Gettis at 6-7 poses a problem for him outside. He can shoot over him. Well, State will have to give up something in that defense. Oh, off to Charles. Blocked by Akeem again, and he just nonchalantly pulls it to himself. Akeem is still running up and down this court. He's not taking a breather yet. I'm surprised, as I said, they don't go against the smaller fellows. There's an example, Wittenberg and Drexler. Drexler almost picked up his fourth foul. Going to pull up for the jump shot. Eight minutes left to go, first half. Here's Gannon. He will not hesitate. Great perimeter shooter. He shot 
in three-point plays in the ACC this year. Gary, one of the best things about him, he doesn't have to dribble the ball to get the momentum to go in the air. Now, State changes their defense. They're in a straight 2-3 defense now. Into Anders. Intercepted by Gannon. Saved, and here comes Lowe. Two on one. But Akeem is trailing. And they walked to the ball, and I know they had to know Elijah Wan was on their tail. You're exactly right, Gary. He saw a lot. Thurl Bailey saw Elijah Wan coming for the block, picked his eye up just a minute, and there's Thurl asking to come out of the ball game right now. But Elijah Wan's tremendous hustle took the, the little bit of concentration away that was necessary to make that catch. Now, Anders and Drexler have checked out. Mishaw is back in. Michael Young is in. Alvin Franklin. There's Mishaw. Thurl Bailey sat down. Close off with Queen back in the game. West two fouls on him. Both teams going to their bench. At the 727 mark, and the way this altitude has been, it's going to pay off down the stretch. Wittenberg now is stuck over to the side with Elijah Wan. Now, he can't possibly rebound against him if Houston shoots from the right-hand side of the court. Alvin Franklin, who had 13 points, is high for the year in tournament play. There's a foul on Wittenberg flying by. He got a piece of young. That is now six team fouls, the second foul on Wittenberg. I think Jim Valvano right here is just trying to get a few minutes of play so he can rest his bigger people. There's a very small lineup on the court right now. Two shots coming for Michael Young. We mentioned four free throw shooting team is Houston. They were shooting 62% for the year. And Billy against Louisville, they shot only 52% in the semifinal. And Young has shown right there shooting about 67%. And he has a great release. He just doesn't seem to stay with the shot on the foul line. So NC State with a three-point lead. Jim Balvano having a conversation with Lowe. What he's telling him, he's got the small ball club in the game, is to pull this game out. Go a little four corners, make Houston work a little bit. He wants to rest his big people on the bench. 6.50 left in the first half as they spread it out. Now people are booing. There off is the a off the leg of Franklin. Gannon saved it. We're going to have a foul on Reed Geddes. I think a wise coaching decision by Jim Valvano. That's 16 fouls on them also. Pull the ball out, make Houston chase on defense, gives his man a, a chance to rest. You've got Drexler out of the game, so you can't get any advantage on him anyway. Thurl Bailey's coming back in. Charles will sit down. There he goes. So they're alternating the two. They haven't had him in the same lineup very much in this tournament. They kind of had one or the other on the floor. Houston back in the 2-3 zone. And Jim Valvano wanting his team to pull it out. Ooh, almost pass. too high as Young went for the intercept. Yeah, and he's two for two. Make a surprise, get us a little bit. Guy Lewis seemed to be very upset over there. He's calm, but a little bit nervous. He trails by five with 618. And there again, you have Wittenberg down in the back line in that zone. He's just buried behind all those big fellas. Michael Young has been a clutch performer all year long. Look at Franklin. He tries to follow over the top. Three on one. Geddes is back. McQueen, and that's a tough play to make. But he is fouled. And there was an interesting thing right there. Elijah Wan is kind of screaming at Young. Here they come down to court. Kozel McQueen does a good job keeping it on the floor and not walking. He gets fouled by Geddes. And here you have Drexler coming back in the game, Young going out. David Rose is getting ready to come in for Houston, too. Geddes with his second personal foul, and he may replace Geddes. That's who he's going to replace. David Rose, who plays a savage style defense. Geddes, make it a breather. 5.57 left in this first half. Kozo McQueen only been to the foul line 31 times all year. But he is playing solidly in the final four. You know what amazes me is how fluid he's been. He was a little mechanical earlier in the year, Billy. Now he's making some moves to the basket. And he was only averaging 22, 23 minutes a game because he was getting in so much foul trouble. He's only averaging 3.3 scoring-wise. And in this ball game, he's already above that. 22-15, biggest lead of the game. Into Akeem. Over Baylor. Now, that's what Akeem was screaming about. On the back line is Wittenberg, matched up with Akeem Olajuwon. He can go right over the top of him, and he wanted the ball inside. For a guy that's only played this game four years, he knows when to get the ball. He's a very intelligent young man. He's talked about his parents the other day at the press conference, said they don't know anything about my basketball, just my education. Nice pass off to Bailey. What if an assist by Lowe. 24-17, 10 points for Thurl Bailey. 
Alvin Franklin, who started him off offensively in that semifinal game, has been shut down in this one. Here's Misha. Hakeem. Houston's doing a smart thing now. They realize Wittenberg's too small to play in that back line, and they're going right at him. Hakeem now with 10 points. 24-19. I think this game's surprising some people. I think the tempo is surprising a lot of people, probably the Houston kids as much as anybody. They had to be reading the newspapers, too. They knew they had to play well. They couldn't just throw the ball on the floor, as that expression goes. And right now they're in a battle. Out it comes to low. Four and a half minutes left. Give Franklin a lot of credit. He's really given Wittenberg his hands full. Off to Bailey again. They'd love to kick it out to him in that wing area. three guards they used against Georgia when they were protecting the lead and they're doing a good job now Lowe has a step on him but Lowe. Rose was able to get a hand on the ball Lowe is a little bit too quick for Rose he can go by him often and he said that a ref you should have called the foul which he was probably right we're gonna have a timeout four minutes 15 seconds to go this is for the 1983 NCAA championship 24 19 NC State a standing room only crowd, better than 17,000 on hand for the championship of NCAA basketball with 4.15 to go in the first half. The surprising North Carolina State Wolfpack leading Akeem Abdul Olajuwon and the Cougars 24 to 19. Akeem already has 10 points, 11 rebounds and four blocks in this game. He's an incredible young athlete. Gary, I look back to the the last loss this Houston club had was against Virginia, and they said the reason they let down that night is they thought they were going to play against Ralph Sampson, and when they realized he wasn't going to play, they lost their concentration. That could have happened to them a little bit so far in the first half tonight. There's Drexler and Gannon. Isn't that something? 6'7", Drexler out there shadowing a six-foot guard, and he can get away with it. Gannon may try one gamble to take Drexler and try to get him for a reach foul. Yes, it is. Wittenberg, though, had it batted away. Kozel McQueen saves to Bailey. Boy, Bailey Beautiful is playing touch. well. That's 12 points for him. Beautiful touch by Thurl Bailey. 26-19, 3-40, and Houston hasn't trailed very much. In fact, the last game that they trailed, the Louisville game prior to that was 11 games back to the TCU game. They have not trailed very often this year. And State staying in that 2-3 zone. David Rose tipped by Misha. McQueen lost it. Misha. And Gary, there's, there's the point of the zone that's really got to have Jim Valvano worried. If they shoot the ball from the left-hand side of the court, Wittenberg is stuck over there against the Mishaws and the Elijah ones, and they're just rebounding over him. That's nine inches difference. 26-21, low, Rose chessing, Hakeem with another block. Here is Gavin saving in the backcourt. I think most people realize that was not backcourt because of the last touch by Houston. Here's Wittenberg. Rebound, Misha. Comes out to Gretchen. Watch this one now. Draw the charge. Smart play. That's four on him. Drexler has committed his fourth. Smart play by Gannon. Now he went, he did one thing there that might might have got him in trouble. He grabs Drexler by the legs. Watch this right here. But he wasn't worried about anything other than getting the foul. See him right there? He goes for the tackle to make sure that there's a charge. A lot of fans didn't like the call including Guy Lewis. Now, Guy Lewis had one of his assistants run over to him and indicate he had four fouls, so they're aware of it. We yep. were wondering if earlier they did, but they don't have him out of there yet. State would be smart to pull the ball out and get it to Gannon. Here's Bailey again, 14 points for Bailey. It's a seven-point lead for NC State. I think Houston be wise to take a timeout to get Drexler out of the game because you never can tell when he can pick up a cheap foul. Benny Anders will come in at the first opportunity. 2.20 left in the first half. Rexer with four fouls. Misha, he threw it away, saved nicely. Akeem is everywhere, isn't he? Oh, boy, is he playing a game of a lifetime. Everybody talked about him being a first-round draft choice, and he's showing it tonight. Bailey has hit five field goals in a row. He has 14 points, and you saw that impressive rebound. Rose bouncing into McQueen, no whistle, less than two. You see the time left in the first half. Here's a clear out for Wittenberg, but Franklin's giving him great man-to-man -man defense so far tonight. Rexer with those seconds. four fouls, Billy. I'm surprised he's staying on him that tight. Look at the forward scoring. Bailey has 14 of those. Akeem, but wait a minute, goaltending. Sidney Lowe can beat Rose anytime he wants to. 
to going down the middle. You'll see it right here. Now, he, Lowe's just can't stay with it. Lowe looks one way, puts it up the left hand. Now, let's see that. I believe the ball was still on the way up, but it's a tough call. I might want to see that one again. I think it was on the way up. You, the team is like Samson and, and Patrick Ewing. They make blocks that you just don't believe they can get to, and sometimes it surprises even the official. This is the biggest lead in the game for North Carolina State. They lead by nine. Drexler's out. Here's Anders. And now this time, Gannon is called for the foul. That's 17 fouls. So they'll be shooting some free throws. Anders, who just checked in for the foul play, Drexler will go to the line. Now you see they're going right to Wittenberg. Good pass by Akeem in there. That one looked like a charge to me. Gannon got there in time. A smart move by Guy Lewis to get Drexler out of the ball game. Drexler, he has got to be stunned to be sitting on the bench with four fouls. He's still a minute 24 left in the first half. Haley with yet another rebound. 121. I think Jim Valvano wants one shot the rest of the way. I don't know if his team saw him, but that's what he wants. Wittenberg somehow gets the ball to Bailey, and Anders hammers him. Benny Anders commits the foul, sending Bailey to the free throw line. I don't think Jim Valvano's club saw the signal, which was to get one shot. They put it up quickly. And so Bailey will go to line. Jim Valvano, who has just been a joy down here. Everyone has been quoting him day after day. You saw the interview he had with Brent Musburger. He had tongue-in-cheek when he said he wouldn't shoot the shot until Tuesday. He's come out here and played at a faster tempo than most people thought they were capable of, especially against Houston. Now, one thing for everybody to remember, Houston's an extremely explosive club, and they showed a great Louisville team that they can come back from behind, so I wouldn't in any way, shape, or form count them out. Bailey gets one of the two. A 10-point lead, the biggest lead. 109, first half to play. Again, Nishaw down there with Wittenberg behind him. Houston kind of ignoring him. Alvin Franklin, funny looking shot. Rose has the rebound. He got it to Anders. Anders again. What hustle. That's three points for Benny Anders, but give a lot of credit to Davis Rose. He just went flying through the air. 39 seconds to go. Now Valvano wants him to circle out and kill the remaining time. Take the last shot. Well, Rose is a hustler out here. He might not be quick enough for low, but he is. So that's a foul. Anders committing a personal foul. That's his second. You got him, Benny. <laughs> Benny didn't want that. He wanted to watch the replay. He's a good kid, too. Great athletic talent. Well, he's a cousin of Willis Reed, Orlando Woolridge, who played at Notre Dame. So he comes from some fine stock, basketball-wise, as Wittenberg now, surprisingly, with only two points in this game, you wouldn't think they could lead like this without more scoring than that from Derrick. Well, give Franklin a lot of credit. His man-to-man -man defense on Wittenberg has been outstanding. And now we're going to have a substitution at the first opportunity. It's going to be for the shooter, so Jim Valvano is keeping Ernie Myers on the sideline. Hoping Wittenberg hits this shot so he can get him out of the game. North Carolina State now is 6 of 7 from the free throw line. On the other hand, Houston's hit only half of theirs, 5 of 10. Here comes Ernie Myers. We didn't see him in the semifinal game. What a player he's going to be, a freshman. A freshman out of the Bronx. So Wittenberg will sit down. And Myers, as most people know, when Wittenberg was hurt this year, Myers was the guy that picked up all the scoring load. Anders from outside. Instant offense for the Houston team. He has five now. You're going to see one shot right here. Unless fouled, I doubt seriously if the NC State will put up any kind of Look shot. Look at David Rose. Is he tough? He reaches in on low, and he's got a foul. Tackled him at the same time. Boy, Rose, he's a warrior out there. He's 25 years old. He went on a Mormon mission, and he plays with bad knees and all. There's a great split of the double team by Sidney Lowe. He goes through. Now, watch Rose going for the ball. That could have been a tough injury if Lowe wasn't in such good condition because he clipped him right on the knee. You know, Guy Lewis didn't even think David Rose would play this year. He had so much trouble with the knee, but he has played hard, as evidenced by that play. Well, a good move by Guy Lewis in this respect. He knows he can commit as many fouls as he wants. And here's that unusual foul shooting position by Lowe. Shoots across his body. Rebound, Anders. They got a hurry. Anders going to get it underway in time. It would have counted. So the surprising North Carolina State team leads the number one ranked team in the country.
33-25. 33-25 at the half, and I'm with Billy Backer and Gary Bender. And I'll tell you, Billy, if any player in this tournament has made himself a lot of money lately, it's that Thurl Bailey of the Wolfpack. What a job. He's an outstanding ball player, and as I said on the top of the show, Brent, he has the ability to shoot that perimeter jumper, which really alters things when you try to defense him. You know, Gary, in listening to you, you are really impressed by one Akeem the Dream. He has in this game 10 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 blocks. That's a whole season for some players. I, I've never and, seen anybody get down the floor like he does. He's demanding the ball, Brent. Here's a guy that hasn't played that much, and it looks like he can just go over the top all night long. One of the things that's so amazing, and I mentioned about Patrick Ewing's ability to go the length of the floor, he has not been out of this ball game, and yet he, he goes down the 90 feet every time full blast. Now, we had a moment of controversy. What was Drexler doing on the floor with three fouls? Uh, well, we talked about the fact that Guy Lewis on Saturday didn't realize that Mishaw had four on him. And in this particular case, uh, he had to be aware of that Mishaw had the three fouls on him. And that last time, Gannon did the perfect thing. Don't worry about anything other than drawing the charge. And really, Brent, that play that got him the third foul, the out of bounds, we weren't sure for a while on that. Because it was a batted out-of-bound play, we didn't know whether it had been kicked out of bounds or the foul. So we were concerned for Guy Lowe's, well, but they were on top of it. I was refereeing, and I thought he fouled him. I thought, I thought they missed it. I thought they missed the call. Lucky. This one I had right in the tournament. Now, we're getting a little carried away about North Carolina State because I can remember a Louisville team dominating five slamma jamma, and then you know what happened out here in the second half. I think the big difference, though, is Drexler, the guy that really ignites him defensively on a comeback situation, has to be very careful if he goes back in the game. Another thing, Brent, I don't think a forward has played this well in a long time the way Thurl Bailey's playing against Houston. He's gone in there and he's playing their game. All right, you two catch your breath. That second half is going to be great. North Carolina State leads by 10 at halftime. It's only the fifth time this year that the Houston Cougars have trailed at halftime. Looking at the shooting statistics, Billy Packer, surprisingly low field goal percentage. Uh, you know, I never would have dreamed that they were shooting under 40%. I realize there's been a lot of offensive rebounding, but I thought the Wolfpack was shooting better than that. Well, one thing is shocking, too. North Carolina State to be leading by eight, and their starting guards have had only two of 11 shots. I think you can credit Franklin uh, a great deal with the work on Wittenberg. I think, Gary, what we're going to see here in the second half is one of those situations where momentum becomes important, just like at every great championship event. Does the lead that NC State have put the pressure on them, or do Houston figuring they were a cinch to win the national championship have all the pressure? Now, we have a real interesting lineup change. Drexler is not starting. Brian Williams is in there, and Anders is in there, starting at the forwards, and Anders starts them out. What's also interesting is Guy Lewis kept his club in the dressing room so only two minutes were left to go on the, sh on, on the clock for halftime. He's out pressing full court, man to man. Alvin Franklin, Anders, Michael Young, Elijah Watt, and Brian Williams. Here's Wittenberg. Up to Kozel McQueen, and he threw it away. Kozel tried to look one way and pass the other. He faked himself out. This year, when Houston has trailed at halftime in the four previous games, they've won two and have lost two. One of those big wins was in the semifinal when they came from behind, trailing by five at halftime against Louisville. Turnovers in the first half. NC State only had four, so they start off in a bad shape there. That's off of McQueen. Going to have a substitution, Reed Geddes. And you know why Reed Geddes is coming in? He is their designated inbounds passer. And, of course, Franklin goes out on the first ball that's thrown out of bounds. He has an opportunity to go out. He's coming right back in the game, however. That's just a superstition on the part of Guy Lewis. Gettys has pulled it off, and he has him set up offensively. We played one minute down the second half. Anders again, and a push off inside is going to go on Brian Williams. No, I no, Charles. Lorenzo Charles, Williams in there. Good, powerful player. Here's Franklin coming right back in the ball game. And let's see who he was going to take out. Oh, because the ball's being taken out of the bounds. They got to keep going. Oh, he's got to go in the game. Yes, he does. He has got to go in the game. And Hank Nichols, the official, he has must figured that out, and he's going to bring him in now. Yep, he must go in the game. Now, he wants to go in for Geddes. Geddes is the guy that throws the ball in bounds. So, Franklin, obeying his coach, did not want to go in there. But he's been whistled in. He must go in. So, all that strategy goes out the window. This time, Alvin Franklin will bring it in. And does very alertly to Akeem. State stays in the 2-3 zone. Now, they got a much bigger back line now that they only have two guards in the game. 
Rexer on the bench with four fouls. Mishaw not starting the second half. Franklin, Brian Williams chases it down. Anders again. Beautiful driving layup by Anders. Boy, he has four points in the second half. Nine for the game. And now all of a sudden it's a four-point game. You talked about that momentum swing, and would you expect Houston to be able to do it with Drexler and Mishaw on the bench? What do you think they'll bring Drexler back, time-wise? I think they'll keep him out of there to about 14 on the clock. And there's a reach-in foul. It's going to go on Brian Williams, I believe. That will be his first. North Carolina State will inbound the ball. There's Williams. He is a senior. He's from Inglewood, California. Transfer out of El Camino Junior College. He's been an outstanding practice player. And here we have the switch. Wittenberg being guarded by Anders. There's Young. Some turn of events here, Gary, in a hurry. Houston has a chance to pull within two. State's defense is packed way back in there. Elijah Wan, that was Charles. Charles got a piece of it. Young retrieved it. Everybody up on the board. Elijah Wan. Elijah Wan got fouled on that first attempt. Shows what a patient inside player he is. All of a sudden, it's two points now. A two-point lead for NC State. Man will go in timeout. You see the multiple shots and the difference in this game. And now Balvano and North Carolina State's got to regroup as Houston has come storming out of the dressing room. They cut what was an eight-point deficit down to two with 17.45 to go. This is ESPN Classic. No words are ever exchanged. Just a chemical connection from afar. A click, a zap, and poof. Your destiny passes you by. How many times is she going to slip through your fingers? How many more chances are you going to get? This train is leaving the station, Slugger. Are you on board? Or what? Every day's a test. Those who pass deserve a great beer. Sam Adams. It's what's inside. 80 grand. A fool's game. 100 grand. A dirty deal. Gotcha. A sucker's back. Four young fellas getting deeper than they could handle. Don't worry. I'll think of something. I think knives are a good idea. Can you got anything a bit bigger? <laughs> The comedy that conquered Britain is coming to America. Ah! It shot me! Ah! Not again. Fucking shot! Lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Clip one, stop getting shot! Rated R. Now playing in select cities. Sports Century's Top 50 Athletes, a year-long celebration. Number 44, Bobby Jones, Friday at 10.30 on ESPN. Presented by General Motors. Gary Bender, Billy Packer, we played two minutes and 15 seconds of the second half, and Jim Valvano's Wolfpack haven't scored. They led by eight, now by two. Defensive pressure has done it for Houston. Jim Valvano had to get that timeout. Very similar situation as to what happened in the Louisville game. When Houston started making a run, Coach has got to take the time out to get it slowed down. Ryan Williams still in the ball game, as is Anders. Lorenzo Charles challenges Young. Rebound, Akeem, that's his 13th of the game. Jim Valvano wanting the foul, no foul called. Houston just beaten, there's a walk. Elijah Wan with 14 points. What's happening right now? Houston has really aggressively beaten NC State to every pass and every rebound. And now that's the second tie of the game. 33 all. The last time that Houston led was at the 15-15 mark of the first half. State guards having a hard time shooting over Anders. Boy, they're coming out on Bailey. They really they? are. They're coming out playing aggressively on every shot. Wittenberg at top of Akeem. And you see Akeem again beat Charles to the ball. Alvin Franklin. Uh, state players are getting very hesitant. We've seen a big momentum change, and State's playing real tight. And North Carolina State still has not scored in this second half. They trail by two. Gary, I'll back up on Drexler coming back into the ballgame now, as long as his team is playing well. Guy Lewis will stick with this club. 
Sidney Lowe had to kick it out to Wittenberg. They need that shot. Remember, the guard shot only two of 11 from the field in the first half. Tied it up. Been tremendous defensive by the part of the Houston guards tonight, Anders and Franklin particularly. And here's NC State. They've gone a little man-to-man -man of their own now. They've gotten out of the zone. Anders again. He's not bashful. Rebound inside by Kozel McQueen. Boy, he's coming out of there with some intensity. And that's the first time State has really battled to the boards in the second half. Lowe will take on the highlight on and then thought better of it. They might have been walking there a little bit. He just changes the whole game in there. Wittenberg a long ways out. Rebound beautifully by Young. Here's Anders. He walked with that one. Good defense by Sidney Lowe. Double dribble on Anders. Too many steps. And now with the 15-32 mark appearing on the clock, North Carolina State will inbound. We'll see it right here. Anders comes down. Right hand. He picked it up. Now he touches it with both hands, and he gets a double dribble call. Baseline. Find some Alice Wittenberg. He can't do that. Here comes two on one. Good pass. <laughs> Anders missed the stop. Lowe commits a foul. I, I think he's going to call. I think he's going to call the basket good. Let's see. An undercut. A two-shot fall for an undercut. The basket will not count. I think the official thought it went in. But it will be a two-shot fall right here. Now Lowe goes under. Gets a piece of him. The official thought the ball went in because he kept his eye right on the players, not on the ball. I didn't think he really did anything out of order, though, low in that particular situation. Anders, Anders is hurting a little bit, but he does not want to come out of the ball game. Anders with nine points, three rebounds. He's hit two big baskets to get him started in the second half. Two shots coming. And Houston has taken the lead for the first time since 15-15 of the first half. There's Drexler with four. Mishaw, they're going to have to come back maybe later now as they're two guys of Anders and Ryan Wins have done the job. Hakeem over Bailey. Hakeem keeps it alive again. Ryan Williams hung up in the air, got it to Elijah. Look at Ryan Williams. Out it comes again, and they're getting multiple shot after multiple shot. Tremendous hustle by the Houston inside people. They're beating NC State to the ball time and time again. Young. And that's a foul on Brian Williams, his second. Jim Valvano screaming and jumping. He's wanting a little help from the officials. But that was a good call. Williams came over the back. His players are boxing out pretty well. Billy, that last flurry is what you would expect to happen all the time. I'm surprised North Carolina State has hung in there as well as they have on the boards. Now, what you're finding right now is that you know, you get a lead, and you get a little nervous about having that lead. Can we hang on? And sometimes fellas take that lead positively. Other times they tighten up. So far for State, they have not been able to get into any offense here in the second half. Houston by one. 14-42 to play for the national championship. Unfortunately for Jim Valvano's club, they got the lead by playing basketball, not by holding the ball. Therefore, they have a better chance of getting back in this game. Look how far they're out on the floor now at Bailey. He'd have to take a 25-footer to get one off. That's probably Guy Lewis is thinking. Williams going out and playing him tough. Here's Lorenzo Charles, and Williams reaches in, and he's committed his third. But that doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt Houston that badly, Gary, because Guy Lewis can use this deep bench to his advantage. They'll kind of wear down the state players. He doesn't concern himself whether Williams would foul out or not because he can come back with Mishaw and there's the reach. That is what Guy Lewis has been able to do is come in with the bench asking for rebounds, defense, points. He has a real diversified bench. They call themselves a cavalry. Here comes part of that bench. Get us in and Anders who did a good job lead. Well, you got to remember the Houston club was undefeated in the Southwest Conference play. They beat their opponents by an average of 21 a game. Rejected by Akeem Adjalbano wants goaltending. He's screaming for goaltending. Great timing by Elijah Wong. Oh, is Jim upset? He's still standing and wanting the call. Michael Young into Elijah Wong. He's going to put it up. What a soft touch. Unstoppable. It 16. In, it's really incredible to watch his progress game after game. 16 points, 15 rebounds, and I think he has six block shots. That's not bad. Seven. Here's Lowe. Dennis with a rebound. Houston with a 38-35 lead. Still, North Carolina State has scored only two points in the second half with 13 and Nobody a half minutes left. 
getting one shot and done. Houston's getting as many shots as they need. There shows you what's happened to North Carolina State. The one field goal. There are only two points in the second half. Good job by Bailey coming out on Geddes. Roselle McQueen trying to push Elijah one inside. Michael Young. 40 to 35. Remember, they trail by eight and a half. Now lead by five. Another timeout coming up for Valvano. And he is still complaining, Billy, about that goaltending. Look at him. But I think it was such a good block. It just surprised Jim Valvano. Well, as you said many times, he might be working the officials a little bit. He's upset. Brian Williams looks like he's in pain. Houston leads by five, and Billy, the shot chart, really interesting. Well, it tells the story. Houston scoring not only from Young on the side, Elijah Wan in the middle. You go down in the other end, you talk about the Lone Ranger. Here's NC State's only fit field goal, Wittenberg from the deep outside. In this second half, Houston has outscored North Carolina State 15 to two and out-rebounded them 12 to two. They are dominating. And most of those on the offensive boards. Guy Lewis stays with that lineup that started that second half. Gettis out there. That's Williams what, still out there. That's why I started to say all this occurring with that Drexler and Nishaw. Is that depth? Here's Bailey. He's been shut down in the second half. Continues to be. I came with another rebound. Right. Elijah Wan altered Bailey's shot and then got right back up there in the rebound. State gets one shot and that's it. Houston could win this. It would be an all-time number of victories in a season for him. That's deflected out of bounds. What I think is also interesting, all those great teams with Alvin Hayes, you assume they were in the championship, but they never got to the championship game. And that is absolutely domination. Remember in the Louisville game, they out-rebounded Houston by 10 in the first half, and then Houston just dominated well, them they out-rebounded in the second half, 30 to 15. Hakeem again. Rebound Charles. That's one of the few he's missed in this game. Now let's see if Jim Valvano's timeout was able to slow his team down and get him in an offense. They got to get Bailey back in the offense. He had 15 points in the first half, and he hasn't scored here in the second. I think what they've got to do is set some solid screens for Wittenberg. He's been able to take men one-on-one -on -one throughout this tournament, but Franklin's been staying right with him in this game. Wittenberg can't shake him. Boy, he's tough on him. And he look really at him. is. Wittenberg just cannot shake him. Now here he is on the clear out. Throughout this entire tournament, he's been able to beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. You know, Franklin shut down Stuart Granger of Villanova, you might recall, in that championship game in the Midwest. Wittenberg goes long back door, but gets caught in the double team. Goes Al McQueen. Oh, Elijah Wan again. He guarded McQueen and still got back to the rebound. 17 rebounds for Elijah Wan. Five-point lead for the top-ranked team of the country. Guy Lewis says that he wants to give a medal to that soccer coach in Nigeria that told Elijah Wan he couldn't play soccer. He'd have to get off the team. And that's what started him on basketball. Look at Bailey now coming way out on Geddes. Here's Franklin. He might be the unsung hero of this ball club. The way he shut down the guards outside. Elijah Wan. Good block. Clean got a piece of it. Saved it in. Nice play. Nice play is right. Last field goal for North Carolina State in the second half is at the 16-14 mark, Billy. And we have less than 11 to play in the game. Elijah Wan let the screen get the ball that time. Michael Young comes down with it. It's amazing. North Carolina State has scored only Elijah two Wan points in the Gary, second half. Gary, Elijah Wan's exhausted right now. He needs a breather. He's bending over at the foul line just trying to get his rest. And Guy Lewis is pulling the ball out so Elijah Wan can rest. I'll tell you another guy is Brian Williams. He's exhausted too. Well, this is a smart move by Guy Lewis taking up a little time. There's Franklin. Off to Elijah Wan. He's fouled by McQueen. That is the third foul on Kozell McQueen. Here comes Drexler back in the ball game. Guy Lewis kept him out of there for almost 10 minutes. So Clyde comes in, and he has played with four fouls on many occasions this year, Billy, and has been able to stay all the way. And coming out is Williams. Williams was exhausted. Elijah Wan is going to stay in there, evidently. He hits the free throw. He is really tired, though. 41-35, 17 points, 17 rebounds, and seven blocks. Is that something? With 21 points and 22 rebounds in the semifinal game. Well, centers have always been the story of this Final Four. I can remember the great play of Paul Hogue at Cincinnati when they beat Jerry Lucas's great club. And you go back 
a long time. Bob Curlin, the centers have always been important in this game. Wittenberg creating something. McLean can't capitalize on it. Saves it off of Michael Young. It'll be North Carolina State ball. Some, nice heads up play by McQueen. Some defensive sequence for Elijah Wan again. He stopped the drive inside and got over on his man. Now watch this. He comes over to stop the drive on Wittenberg. Hits the floor, bounces right back over and alters McQueen's shot without a foul. And Kareem or Akeem is coming out of the game. He's been replaced by Misha. Here's Wittenberg and they have missed nine shots in a row. Nine misses in a row. They're one of 11 in the second half. Now let's see what happens here. I think Houston will spread the ball out so that they can use up some clock while Olajuwon gets his breath. Here they are. They're spreading out. They're not using a center. Elijah Wan will get a rest. They put Nishaw in the middle and make State chase him for a minute or two. Looking for a layup if it's there. Nine minutes, 35 seconds left in this championship game. State playing with three guards. Nishaw saw Young on the baseline. Now to get us. In high school, Nishaw's team at Worthing played against the map. Mishaw playing for Worthing, as I said. Lowe and Wittenberg playing for Ganapa, and they beat him in a five-overtime game. That's the tenth turnover now against Houston. Wittenberg needs one. And that's only the second field goal of the second half, both of them by Wittenberg. That might ignite him. 42-37, less than nine minutes to go. And here's that spread. Smart move by Guy Lewis. Use up a little time on the clock. Let Elijah Wan get his breath. He's over there with oxygen on. Trying to get his breath. Wittenberg trying to stay on Young. He throws it away and saved by Franklin. Franklin too much speed for Gannon. Nice pass to Geddes. Beautiful backdoor cut. There's Elijah Wan trying to get his breath. Get us with four points. North Carolina State now starting to worry a little bit about the time. 8.16 left in the game. They also have to worry about getting into some kind of offense. And this Houston man-to-man -man defense has been amazing for guys their size. Bailey just hasn't been a factor in the second half. He carried him in the first half. He's got Drexler on. It'd be a good move for State to make sure Bailey touches the ball in this sequence. Wittenberg kind of frustrated with Franklin. That's a tough shot. You can't get that off. McQueen saved it. Wittenberg again. He's got all three field goals in the second half. That wasn't really Franklin's fault because he went out there on the long jumper and fortunately the ball came back. A turnover. Low to Gannon. He's fouled by Geddes. That's three on Reed Geddes. Fourth team foul against Houston. Very smart play by Sidney Lowe to come back and intercept that ball. You can see the Houston kids kind of relaxed. Sidney Lowe came right back for the steal. Just a little lack of concentration. And there's the foul by Guinness. Guy Lewis calls timeout. The Houston Cougars now have three left. NC State also with three timeouts left. 7.38 to play. Balvano's team down by five. the Wolfpack has a ravenous appetite, but they're going to have to get going here. They trail 44-39. Akeem Abdul Elijah on coming back in. Benny Anders in. There's the elevation here at Albuquerque, 5,200 feet. And throughout this semifinal and national game, you could see how laboring they have been, trying to catch their breath using the oxygen. Well, you can also see how wisely Guy Lewis is using his bench. Now he's got Rose out there. He's got get us to chase he had Franklin to chase so the NC State guards have got to be wearing down and Guy Lewis keeps coming in with fresh men here's an excellent free throw shooter missing 91 percent on the year for Gannon Guy Lewis must think everything's going his way because Gannon this year one time hit 30 in a row Rose was in the lane a little early makes no difference it's a four-point game with 738 to go Rexer with four fouls and a little spread offense going right here. Houston's got a lot in their arsenal. North Carolina State has not scored in their front line. It's been all Wittenberg in the second half. Elijah one out to Drexler. Shows how smart he is as a player. Instead of trying to force it up, he gets the ball back out. Wittenberg almost had the steal, saved by Geddes. 
Drexler Anders broken out by Gannon. And it hit off Anders' leg. Good oh, and call. is he complaining that one? He doesn't want to get a technical right here, but that was quite a call and quite a play by Gannon. You see it right here. Watch this pass by Drexler on the dish. Anders comes through, makes a jump stop. There's Gannon hit right off Anders' knee. They have a chance to cut it to two. We have a foul on David Rose going after Wittenberg. That's his second. 15 fouls, so two more, and they'll be shooting some free throws. Boy, David Rose comes in, and he looks like he's mad at somebody the way he plays defense. But that's all right. He occupies up the offensive man and keeps Wittenberg under pressure with a fresh man all the time, and it's tough to shoot when a guy's that aggressive. Again, Bailey has not scored in the second half, nor has the entire front line for North Carolina State with 6.46 remaining. And Bailey has Drexler on him. They ought to go to him a little bit. There he is. Rejected Akeem. That's off of Akeem. That might be one reason he had scored. Well, one of the reasons that Akeem blocked so many shots also is that there are tough defensive players guarding the offensive end, so he's there waiting on them after they get by him. That's his eighth block. He had eight blocks in the semifinal. He had eight blocks in the championship game of the Midwest as Alvin Franklin returns to the lineup. David Rose goes out. Again, North Carolina State with a chance now to whittle it down to two. Houston playing a 2-3 zone. Drexler being very aggressive on Bailey. Lowe from outside, and they needed that one, and it's a two-point game. Sidney Lowe, four points in the game. Now, State would really have to suck it up here, Gary, as far as exhaustion is concerned, because they haven't had the fresh players in the ballgame, as has Houston. Alvin Franklin Gavin, shoulder to shoulder with him. Little collision en route to the basket. Here's Drexler. Look how he handles the ball. And they're really making it tough on State because they're making him chase. 56 left in the game. Well, Houston you, by two. You hold the ball like this and you lose a little momentum yourself. Now what they're trying to do is draw State out far enough that Elijah want to be one-on-one -on -one inside. You see the time, the lower right-hand portion of the screen. Well, Guy Lewis telling his team to take the club back out farther. I'm surprised he's not keeping the pressure on State. Franklin hits it. Franklin will average 27 points a game in high school. He has four tonight, and it's back to a four-point lead for the Cougars. Franklin has accepted that role of being a point leader as opposed to a shooting guard, which he was in high school. Terry Gannon, that's a tough shot because Anders went flying by in front of him. Terry Gannon has seven points. And point out the fact that those would be three-pointers in the oh. ACC, and that's where NC State took such great advantage of that rule when they played in conference. Boy, Drexler has been quieted down that foul difficulty as Gannon commits a foul on Alvin Franklin. That's his second personal foul, four team fouls against NC State. Now, that was called by Jim Valvano. Now, why he wants to call the fouls, and he wants to make sure that he's got Houston in the one-and-one because they are not a good free throw shooting team rather than letting them run time off the clock. They may be the only weakness of this club is free throw shooting. And Gannon could waste the foul. 442. Not a lot of time for that to happen, however. Only 14 fouls. Elijah on. 20 points. Can't say much more. He's making jumpers, blocking shots, grabbing rebounds. That's the fourth game, Billy. He scored 20 points. Four in a row. 17 rebounds to go with it. Gannon again. Get us with a rebound. That was a little too far out. And again, State is not putting any pressure on Drexler by getting the ball to Bailey. Here comes Franklin. Gannon commits the foul. So that's five team fouls. Again, the front line scoring, we pointed out, Bailey has not scored after scoring 15 in the first half. And now another freshman comes in and young as Benny Anders sits down. That was Gannon's third foul. For Geddes, Drexler, Franklin, Young, and Elijah in now for Guy Lewis. Now let's see if Jim Valvano goes to foul again. We now have four minutes left in this game. Young against McQueen. He's got the basket and the foul. That's not the foul Jim Valvano wanted, but Young is so tough on the baseline. That's four fouls on the 6'11 sophomore center. Watch Young on this baseline. He shoots from down on the baseline as well as anybody in the collegiate game. Puts it right up. McQueen gets a piece of him. The shot goes anyway. 
He's really a forward playing a guard spot for this Houston team. He loves to go inside. Here he is with six points. Rebound McQueen with four fouls. He's still aggressive. There's not a lot of time left now. 3.53. Here was Drexler again. You just don't get that pass against this team. And now coming in will be Lorenzo Charles for NC State. Gannon is going to exit, so they're going to go to two guards now. And what we have to think about for NC State, they're calling some timeouts if they score. They've got to get this clock stopped. Both teams have three timeouts left, and now North Carolina State has two. So the Wolfpack trailing 50 to 44 with 343. Remember, they led by eight at halftime. Well, we saw another Houston blitz. 21 to 1 was that Louisville blitz. And tonight, in kind of a different style, with different uh, makeup of their ball club, they put the blitz on NC State. Billy, I said it half. There's been very few teams that a forward has been effective against Houston. Now, they had that in the first half. Bailey came in. He had 15 points and five rebounds. All intents and purposes, he's disappeared. And you see what's happened to that lead. Well, I, I really don't think it's been all Phil Bailey's fault in this respect, Gary. He has not touched the ball much in the second half, and, and he was played by Drexler here recently, who's got four fouls on him. State's going to have to get the ball to Phil Bailey and see if he can get in the offense. I think you don't blame Bailey. You just give Houston all the credit in the world. You've got to. So at 3.43, we have some excitement here. State. They feel they're a team of destiny. They've come from behind so many times. They've been called the cardiac kids. They won five, come from behind games in a row to get to the final 16. They got to do it again. They better be careful here. Nobody guarding the inbounds passer. Queen, Queen wisely comes back. In the second half, North Carolina State shooting 26 percent. Houston 50. That's low. A far to Sydney Lowe, but he hits it anyway. That's two in a row he's been able to hit now. Cut it back to four. Six points for Sidney Lowe. Young, very good with the ball in the open court area. Everyone can handle the ball, and that's Bailey fouling Drexler. His first, and seven team fouls. So now we'll see, as you were pointing out, Billy, if Houston can do the job at the free throw line. Good strategy by NC State. You want to try to take advantage of the other team's weakness. They did against Memphis State. They hit 16 of 20 in that first round game of the Midwest Regional and Drexler has three points as he hits his first. But they only shot 52% Saturday against Louisville. Hi, Drexler, a pretty good judge of talent too. He said he voted, he voted for uh, another player to, have to be the MVP of the Southwest Conference and that other player, of course, Walt, Darrell Walker came right through and won the MVP yesterday in the East-West game. Houston now 10 of 16 from the free throw line, and Lowe is hot. He's got the hot hand. They may have to go to him. Eight points. 52-48. 2.58 left in the game, and they're all over Young, and he's fouled. Jim Valvano's going to turn it into a foul shooting contest the rest of the way. And Lorenzo Charles is guilty of the foul. That will be his second. Now, let's check statistically on this ball club. The best free throw shooter is Drexler. We just saw him a while ago convert two. He's shooting 74%. Young, 67. Elijah wants a porous, along with Misha. They both shoot 59%. Well, you can't be too particular now, Gary, as to who you foul. You just got to stop that clock and put him on the line. Michael Young, 0 for 3 from the line, 0 for 4. And now a chance to cut it to 2. NC State. Sidney Lowe has been shooting from farther out than you'd anticipate. Let's see if they try to get that ball to Thurl Bailey some. Wittenberg has been shut down by Franklin, working hard. He challenges it. Came and he didn't get it done. And they throw it away. Lowe's got it. They've got another crack at it. You have Wittenberg wide open in the corner. Oh, and it's a two-point game. That's where the... The friendship and teamwork that's taken place by Law and Whitberg, they just know where each other are on the floor at all times. Now Valvano's saying, get back defensively. 
Well, he's got Bailey in the position to be able to foul. Here's Hakeem again. Tipped out. That was McQueen who got a hand on it. Here comes Lowe. Lowe. Wittenberg to Wittenberg. He can tie it up. And with 154, it's deadlock. Now let's see what the strategy becomes. Whether NC State wants to go back in the zone and get a little rest here. They're back in the zone. Some come back on the part of both these teams in the second half. You see the time left. Guy Lewis up. He's trying to orchestrate it. He's going to try to get Franklin outside to handle the ball. Jim Valvano, I'm sure he's going to foul. Put somebody on that line. He's trying to pick out the guy to foul. Here he is. They get it to Franklin. They're going to foul him. Oh, nope, they didn't get there in time. Well, Wittenberg's going to have to stay out a little bit further in order to get there. Don't want to foul Gettys. Let's see if he gets it now. There it is. Yep. And they you see how smart he was, Gary. He went for the ball instead of just going out there for the grab and picking up the two shots. Now, Franklin's a 63% free throw shooter. But he's a freshman, and I'm sure Valvano's taking that in a accord as he will send him to the line with 105. Wittenberg with his third foul. Four points for Franklin. His first time at the line tonight. Nice piece of coaching by Jim Valvano. Really instructed his players, and they responded. Boy, you saw the tension Guy Lewis had. He's got to block out on these foul shots. And they did. McQueen almost took it away and lost it. Bailey and McQueen were fighting over it. All right, Jim Valvano has two timeouts left. He's got to be very, very careful not to use one too early. We come down now, as you see, to 48 seconds. 52 all. This is for the national championship. Timeout. North Carolina State has one remaining. Well, this has been something. One than the other, surging. They're all even. 44 seconds to decide the issue. North Carolina State, they led by eight at halftime, and then they found themselves in a catch-up posture. They've tied it up. All 19 points, Billy, that they have scored this half have been from the guards. Well, let's think of what you're going to do right now. They've got one more timeout left. They might take it down till they get it to 18 or 16 seconds. You're going to have a man-to-man -man pressure by Houston. It looks like Akeem on Bailey. Who is Drexler guard? Drexler's staying inside. Looks like he might be on Charles. Oh, dangerous pass. No, it's the half-court trap that Houston's using. Now, Jim Valvano might not have anticipated this, so he'd probably call that timeout if a player gets in trouble. He has his three guards in there now as Gannon's in there with Wittenberg and Lowe. Down to 25 seconds. Dangerous pass. This is a really interesting strategy by Houston. They're aggressive now. Not staying back. Well, remember they have a team in there for, to block anything that goes inside. Down to 14 seconds. Oh, almost stolen by Drexler. They, Boy, is he good at they've that. They've got to drive to the basket. It's down to seven seconds. You can see the time. Wittenberg. Oh, it's a long way.
Wittenberg, this is from 30 feet out. Watch Charles. And with two seconds, the kid is able to put it in, and the team of destiny, the Cardiac Kids, North Carolina State, has captured their second NCAA championship to go with 1974's title. 54 to 52. And at the end of this game. And now, let's go to Brent Musburger. What an ending. The Cardiac Kids have done it. They have won the national championship. They came in here at eight-point underdog. They were outscored 15-2 to two to start the second half. And yet Jim Valvano and this team would not quit. And in the final analysis, it was the coaching and the strategy that turned this game around when they sent Houston to the free throw line and the Cougars could not nail down the free throw. Jim Valvano, it was drama that no one will ever forget. Your emotions. Brent, our kids have never, you know, I know it's a cliche, but we've never quit in a game down the stretch all year long. And I knew we wouldn't today. We just couldn't get and any offense generated. So the ball would not go in. But we felt that we talk all year about being in a position to win. When you're in a position to win, you have a shot at win. And that's all we wanted. Under four minutes, we felt we put ourselves in a position to win by putting them on the foul line. Gemma, I want to show that last dramatic winning basket. Were you surprised? at the half-court pressure they put on you. Well, we, we anticipated more of a man-to-man -man pressure in his own situation. We wanted, you know, Sidney to make a move to the basket. Or Derek, Derek just didn't know how much time was left there, and he took a prayer. Lorenzo Charles, who I had told him, had not played up to his level. He came in, he made the biggest shot of his life. No question about it. And there is the happiest man in America about to celebrate what, in my opinion, will go down as one of the greatest coaching jobs in the history of this tournament. Jim, you had to tell him, go follow him. You had to send him to the line. That was your order. Oh, no question. We, we play to win the game. Uh, uh, we don't want anybody to beat us by us sitting back. We're going to play. You have to do good things to beat us. We believe in putting people on the line. We'd have put them on the line eight, nine, nine times in a row. Congratulations, Jim. We want to get out. Cut some, net some of your players cut that net down. North Carolina State, the NCAA champions, the three seniors from Washington, D.C., Wittenberg, Lowe, and Bailey. Gary, Billy was kidding you. That was a nice pass at the end of the game. It was a great pass. <laughs> that play was designed for Lorenzo Charles. I told him to be ready for it. I, I was surprised he even reached it on that shot. Well, uh, I usually practice that shot, but uh, I came a little short this time, but that's the way we designed the play. Thurl. Great job by your coach tonight when you were in a situation. He knew you had to make a comeback, and he told you guys to throw some balls on Houston. That's true, Billy. Uh, before I answer, I'd just like to, just to thank God for giving us the opportunity to be here and play as well as we did, because without him on our side, when everything was against us, we'd never be here. And uh, about what you said, uh, Coach, you know, I had no fouls, and I had some fouls to give up. So, you know, we've been doing it all year. We've been fouling people, and they've been missing the, missing the shots at the crucial time. So, you know, we just did that today, and it just worked for us. No longer the cardiac kids. Emotions. Brent, our kids have never, you know, I know it's a cliche, but we've never quit in a game down the stretch all year long. And I knew we wouldn't today. We just couldn't get and any offense generated so the ball would not go in. But we felt that we talk all year about being in a position to win. When you're in a position to win, you have a shot at win. And that's all we wanted. Under four minutes, we felt we put ourselves in a position to win by putting them on the foul line. Gemma, I want to show that last dramatic winning basket. Were you surprised at the half-court pressure they put on you? Well, we, we anticipated more of a man-to-man -man pressure. In his own situation, we wanted, you know, Sidney to make a move to the basket. Or Derek, 
Derek just didn't know how much time was left there, and he took a prayer. Lorenzo Charles, who I had told him, had not played up to his level. He came in, he made the biggest shot of his life, no question about it. And there is the happiest man in America about to celebrate what, in my opinion, will go down as one of the greatest coaching jobs in the history of this tournament. Well, Jim, you had to tell him, go follow him. You had to send him to the line. That was your order. Oh, no question. We, we play to win the game. Uh, uh, we don't want anybody to beat us by us sitting back. We're going to play. You have to do good things to beat us. We believe in putting people on the line. We'd have put them on the line eight, nine, nine times in a row. Congratulations, Thank Jim. We want to get go out. Cut some, net some of your players cut that net down. North Carolina State, the NCAA champions, the three seniors from Washington, D.C., Wittenberg, Lowe, and Bailey. Gary, Billy was kidding you. That was a nice pass at the end of the game. It was a great pass. <laughs> that play was designed for Lorenzo Charles. I told him to be ready for it. I was surprised you even reached it on that shot. Well, uh, I usually practice that shot, but uh, I came a little short this time, but 